So we're kind of working on transitioning here from just chemistry to chemistry in the context of biology. We're getting there. Um, next up, we need to focus in on carbon. Carbon is an element that is extremely important in living things. And in large part, that's because of how great it is at forming bonds with other things. Um, so it makes a really good building block. Um, it can form up to four covalent bonds. So that's just due to the, the same, same reasoning. Um, carbon, in order to complete its outermost electron shell, it likes to share with four other neighbors. So anyway, it can form up to four bonds, which means um, there are all sorts of structural possibilities that can be built with carbon. Carbon can hit, reach out and hold on to two neighbors. Um, and then those, if those neighbors are carbons, they can reach out and hang on to neighbors as well. So we can end up getting these really long molecules, long linear molecules, or we could get sort of like branch structures or even rings that, that form. Um, just to show a couple of examples of carbon and how it can bond with itself, take a look here. These are some familiar things. So what we have is um, the structure of diamond. Diamond is actually made up just of carbon. There's nothing else in diamond. It's a very three-dimensional uh, network of carbon atoms. Each carbon is holding on to four other neighbors. And then each of those neighbors is holding on as well. So four covalent bonds out in every direction. Um, this is a very strong structure. Diamond is extremely hard um, because of this structure that the atoms have networked with each other. Um, another example of a carbon structure is pencil lead. Well, not lead, but graphite, the stuff that is in pencils and allows you to write with a pencil. Graphite has this structure. The carbons are arranged into this ring structure, and um, these tend to exist as sort of like sheets. So if you've got these sheets stacked on top of each other, What's gonna happen? They're really good at sliding past each other. So a little bit of the graphite just kind of slides off onto the paper as you press down on the pencil. Um, so very different properties, even though both of these things are made up of just carbon. It all has to do with how they're bonded and how these atoms are arranged relative to each other. Okay, in terms of biology, let's work towards human biology here. Okay, um, even though there's not very much carbon present in the Earth's crust, like less than 0.03% of the Earth's crust is carbon. That's not very much. Even so, about 18% of the human body is carbon by weight. So our bodies do a really good job of accumulating carbon and using it, using it to do certain things. A lot of times in living things, carbon is bonded not just with itself, but also with hydrogens, nitrogens, and oxygens as well. So we're going to be seeing these together quite a lot this semester. The molecules that tend to come up in living things um, are carbon-based and we call those organic molecules. Organic molecules, in the context of science, what this just means is that we have a carbon-based molecule that has covalent bonding to other things like hydrogen. Okay, so it means something, this word organic, this means something a little bit different than like if you go to the grocery store and something is labeled organic, it's, it's a different definition. Um, for us here in this class, organic molecules means it's a carbon-based molecule and it's also going to have hydrogen and there's going to be covalent bonding. <laughs> so um, in living things, and this is what's going to constitute the rest of this chapter for us, um, in living things there are four major categories of organic molecules. They are the carbohydrates, the proteins, the lipids, and the nucleic acids. And each one is super neat. Each one does a different job in the human body. And these are molecules that we will be seeing a lot of this semester. So we're going to take the rest of this chapter um, to explore them. All of these are what are called macromolecules. They're big molecules, and they can be big because they are carbon-based, right? So the fact that carbon can reach out and form so many bonds means that we can get these really big molecules built up. The way that macromolecules can be built is, by our cells is through a couple of special reaction types. 
All right, and a lot of times we will have special enzymes that help us to carry out these reactions. Okay, um, let's talk about the synthesis. We'll talk about how these molecules are built first, and then we'll talk about how they are broken down. So to build a macromolecule, the type of reaction that takes place is a dehydration synthesis reaction. And uh, I think this name is gonna make sense once we look at what's actually going on. So let's just take a look up here. What we have is a representation of a simple sugar. It's a tiny sugar molecule. Here's another tiny sugar molecule. And let's just say we want to connect these together. And the way that we can do that is by taking off a hydrogen from this sugar and an oxygen and a hydrogen from this sugar. If we take those off, what's gonna happen is they will actually form a water molecule together. Okay, and what's left behind is these two sugar molecules are gonna get linked up together. There's gonna be an oxygen that's kind of parked between them um, and they will be linked together. There's the oxygen, here's one sugar, here's the other sugar. So what just happened is we dehydrated these initial sugars, right? We took off a water molecule, we dehydrated it, dehydrated it, and the end result is that they are now connected. So that's called a dehydration synthesis reaction. We can keep going, we can link on as many sugars as we want to. We could take off another water molecule right here and connect a third sugar. Okay, so this ends up being like a growing chain and you'll notice there's a representation of energy right here. This process takes some energy, it requires energy, in order to, to build this connection, in order to pull off the water and get the sugars connected. That takes energy. Just the opposite of this would be what's called a hydrolysis reaction. Hydrolysis, what this word means, is to split. Lysis means to split and then hydro means with water. So to split something with water. Um, and this is how macromolecules can be broken down. So just the opposite of what we looked at with dehydration synthesis. Let's jump over to this other side. So we're gonna start with a big macromolecule. And what we're going to do is add a water molecule to it. And what we would say is that this water molecule is going to attack this bond. So um, the water molecule will end up splitting apart. Part of it will go here, the other part of it will go here, and what's just happened is that bond has been broken in the process. Um, so that's a hydrolysis reaction. Hydrolysis reactions give off energy, and this is what happens every time you eat food and your body breaks it down. Um, your body breaks down the molecules, the food molecules, and we harvest some energy in the process, and then we can use that energy to power our lives. Okay, so hydrolysis reactions also, like we don't have to stop right there, we could keep going, we can break all of these subunits apart from each other until we're down to the basic building blocks of simple sugars. <clears throat> so, um, let's see here. Our four categories of organic molecules that we'll be talking about, carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids, all of them can be built and broken down by these two general reaction mechanisms. So these are being presented right here, kind of on their own, but um, we're gonna see these reactions come up as we proceed through those four different types of organic molecules next.